Is it feasible that there are two pyramids in the territory of Russia that are older than the pyramids found in Egypt? Is this evidence of the existence of an ancient civilization in the Russian territory that goes way back further than we currently hold possible? But before we look into this, I would like to note that this video is kindly sponsored by Blinkist, which is a service that helps inspire people in both their professional lives and personal lives. But more on that later in this video. My name is Kaylee and today we're going to look into the possibility of the existence of two pyramids in Russia and the claims that are made. And of course, I also look at the other side of the coin because I do like to research these things and like to see what is possible and not, or like a scientific explanation if there is one. And yeah, today's other side of the coin was really interesting. So let's go and do that. As you might know, I like to scroll on the internet and I like to look at strange theories and things that people claim about the ancient world. And I don't know, lately I've been a bit into the, is this a pyramid theme when I scroll and search things. And yeah, I mean, I created the video about the possible pyramid on Antarctica about a year ago. And I also created the video about the possible volcano or pyramid the possible pyramid in peru which i personally really really see as a volcano but you know to each their own i researched it my deduction skills came out with this is a volcano and yeah today we're looking into the possible pyramids of ancient russia there's a lot to unpack with today's topic so let's not waste any more time Let's jump right in. So the possible pyramids of ancient Russia are claimed to be located on the Kola Peninsula, which is Kola with a K and not with a C. It's not the drink. It's not the drink Kola. It's the Kola Peninsula. I mean, I put it here on the screen. It's Kola. And as what they call the extreme northwest of Russia. And when I say extreme, I really do mean extreme northwest of russia like it's you can't really go much further northwest than this this peninsula is one of the largest peninsulas in the entirety of europe and yeah that's the kola peninsula it is bordered by the white sea in the south and southeast and bordered by the barents sea in the north and as probably everyone who understand Dutch or is Dutch or knows a lot of Dutch people will know is that I just did say Barents as in the very Dutch way of saying it. Barents Zee. Zee. Barents Zee. It was named after a Dutch person. So yeah, Barents. You can see how incredibly remote this peninsula is. Most of this peninsula is in a subarctic climate, meaning there are usually very long and cold winters with short and cool summers, and the terrain is mostly tundra-like. We know for a fact that humans have settled in the northern region of the peninsula as early as the 7th millennium BCE, but the claims made by the people that these are pyramids counter this and they claim that it could have been inhabited as early as the 40th millennium BCE, which is kind of a massive, huge time gap. And it could only be explained if there was in fact a pre-cataclysmic ancient civilization who lived there during the Ice Age in the Arctic region. Let's continue. There are many many problems with the claims that are made and the pictures they provide as part of their evidence and the entire story when once you really research this one this unravels pretty quickly and you really find out that this is not what they claim it to be many people theorize about an ancient pre-cataclysmic or pre-flood civilization that existed before the Younger Dryas. And 
I mean, I'm not the one to say that without a doubt they didn't exist. I'm personally on the fence with this and I'm not yet convinced enough, if that makes any sense. Not for everyone, probably, but I mean, with the archaeologists that I've spoken to and the geologists that I've spoken to and the paleontologists that I've spoken to, among of among the people that are the paleontologists, I do mean my sister and her boyfriend because they're both paleontologists. I've spoken with them and I personally don't see evidence for a pre-cataclysmic civilization. That doesn't mean that they didn't exist. That just means that I personally don't believe in it. And that's fine because I'm allowed to believe whatever it is that I want to believe. And you're allowed to believe whatever it is that you want to believe. I'm not here to tell you what to believe. I'm just here to tell you that I don't see these pyramids as pyramids. I see them as mountains, but more on that. This civilization left nothing behind but their stone structures. So like these proposed ancient pyramids or the pyramids at the Giza Plateau or structures in Peru like uh, Sacsayhuaman and things like that. It's possible. I'm not saying definitively that it didn't happen. I'm just saying I'm personally on the fence, which is okay. So let's look into the theory and the claims made. So among the claims that are made, they say that archaeological excavations have taken place at the Kola Peninsula, but there is only one mention of a last name of one of the supposed researchers, Volkov. The claim is made that the existence of the legendary Hyperborea is now confirmed, that the Kola Peninsula has now become a mecca for researchers and hunters for scientific discoveries. That this peninsula is the ancestral home of one of the world's most ancient civilizations. These claims are made by scientists who traveled to the Kola Peninsula to conduct scientific research at these pyramids and that they discovered these huge artificially created stone slabs made by humans between 9,000 and 40,000 years ago. That's a massive time frame to say that something was created in between. That's a time frame of 31,000 years in which they say that this was created. It's a bit too big of a gap. It's a big, bit too big of a time frame for me personally to take this too seriously at the start. Apparently, Volkov, one of these researchers, said that we took a special device on the expedition, the most modern geophysical equipment known as the OCO georadar. It shines through the inner space of any object, like an X-ray. He then went on to say that these elevations are of an anthropogenic nature. Therefore, they are not natural hills, but pyramids at the creation of human hands. These scientists had discovered that these pyramids were built in an east-west alignment and that they were rebuilt three times. Every time they were rebuilt, they were rebuilt in height and magnitude. They needed to be bigger. But then when the scientists say what the purpose of these pyramids are is when the confusion in my brain just gets bigger and bigger. They say that these pyramids were not tombs, were not structures to be climbed inside, they weren't temples, they weren't anything but a helpful hand to gaze at the starry night. These pyramids were created and built in a painstakingly manner to observe the starry night's sky. I don't feel like you need a pyramid to observe the starry night sky. I feel like if you want to do that, you just look up to the sky, especially in ancient times when like the light pollution that we currently face in the modern day and age wasn't really a thing. So wherever you went, you could observe the starry night sky. You don't need a pyramid for that. 
I do feel like if you take the time to create a massive pyramid, and in this case, they say two massive pyramids. I do feel like you need a better reason for that to be created instead of like, oh yeah, we built them to observe the starry night sky. I feel like your entire claim just falls flat on at that point. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, you can still believe in it, but I mean, the reasoning behind it really, really fall, it comes short. It really doesn't work for me. <laughs> Sorry. So as you can see, there are quite a few claims that are being made surrounding the theory of the ancient pyramids on the Kola Peninsula in Russia. So now we're going to look into the research that I've done and what I found out, because it's um, not what you think, I feel. But before we look into the other side of the coin, let's talk about Blinkist, the sponsor of today's video. Blinkist is a service that takes away key moments from non-fiction books and they create these 15-minute explainers in text and audio form to help get you some meaningful inspiration. And they also do this with like podcasts and in podcast forms they call it shortcasts and with the 15-minute text and audio explainers from the books they call them Blinks. I personally used this service while I was in England because I was traveling a lot and at points I didn't feel very inspirational and I felt like I was sort of wasting my time because I'm used to working a lot on the channel and on videos, researching and while I was away I wasn't really able to do that. So what I did was I downloaded a couple of the titles they offered and I read them as I was on the train where my connection was really bad. Thankfully, you can download some of these or all of these titles, actually. You can download the audio form or you can download the text form, very handy. For me, it gave me a little bit of frustration because, because I was traveling, um, I wasn't able to use this inspiration in a productive manner because I didn't have a computer with me. I only have a desktop and you don't really travel with a desktop, now do we? No, we don't, <laughs> unfortunately. I still need to like figure out a good laptop that is in my price range that I can get because yeah, I definitely need a laptop for when I'm traveling in the future. <laughs> Learned that. Thankfully, Blink Blinkist also offered titles that help you with mindfulness. And that is something that I really, really needed. And one of the titles that I personally um, read was The Art of Stopping Time by Pedram Shoyai. I'm currently really trying to be more mindful and learn to relax when I'm not working. Another one of the blinks that I've read was A Hunter's Guide to the 21st Century by Brett Weinstein and Heather Haying. I really recommend the read of that or you can listen to the audio. Another great thing, as I mentioned just now, is the fact that you can download the things you wanna read or listen to. You can download them while you have internet and you can use the service while you're no longer in connection to the internet. So for me, that was really great because I've never experienced the terrible quality of internet like I did in England. I would have internet and then I would be able to like send something and then my roaming connection just went out the window and I mean, free Wi-Fi doesn't really work great, especially in trains. So yeah, I mean, I would just disappear from the face of the earth on the internet for like an hour or so before I regained internet again. And that's really not a great thing if you wanna like listen to something. So I was really happy that I was able to download these. So if I've intrigued you just enough or you're just about to say, hell yeah, I want this, then Blinkist has a special offer for my audience. And you can go to the link www.blinkist.com slash Kaylee, which is the top link in the description down below. And it's the top link in the pinned comments. So you can get yourself a seven day free trial. And if you decide that you like the service enough to get yourself a membership, then you can get a 25% discount on a premium membership, 
which I mean is kind of a really good deal. So thank you Blinkist for sponsoring this video and for the amazing service that you give to people. So now we go back to the weird things that surround these claims and the theory about these mountains being pyramids in Russia. So the very first thing that I encountered during my research about these ancient pyramids in Russia is the fact that the pictures that they used to strengthen their claims in fact these pictures show mountains on the Faroe Islands not Russia and they show the mountains known as Hafjall and Halgafeli and sometimes there is a third one in the picture and that one is known as the Klakur mountain the Faroe Islands are located in the North Atlantic Ocean, northwest of the United Kingdom, another extremely remote location. As you see, they usually use these extreme remote locations. And the remoteness of these locations are the reason as to why people do speculate that there is less information to find about it all, and that does make it a lot easier to deceive people and therefore strengthen your claim. But the remoteness also makes it a lot less likely for the claims to be true if the locations are remote in modern times. Think about them being remote in ancient times when the climate was a lot colder, especially around the time frame they claim these pyramids to be made. The time frame they claim these pyramids to be made stretches from 40,000 years ago until 9,000 years ago. This is quite the massive time frame and it shows that really there hasn't been any official research done on these mountains, on them being pyramids, as anyone can make such claims with this large of a time frame given. The very first claims that surfaced on the internet that used these pictures were made in 2014. They indeed mentioned that the location was at the Faroe Islands, although they did mention the mountain Kirvi, which is a different mountain in the Faroe Islands. Also somewhat pyramidal in shape, depending on which angle you use to look at it. Later came the claim about these pyramids to be located at the Kola Peninsula, which we now know to be completely fake. Just, no, it's not them. It's not on the Kola Peninsula, sorry. Now that we know that these mountains are Hafjall and Halgafeli, we can look into the research that is done at these mountains. The Faroe Islands are obviously glacially shaped, leaving many mountains to be shaped due to the glaciers eroding around them. The shape of these two mountains seem to be coming from the cirque erosion that was caused by glaciers. But here comes another twist of events, another angle inside this claim. There is a claim being made that a geologist who studied at the Caltech University in America studied these mountains and he was of the personal opinion that they are man-made. But even with this claim, there are holes and in fact, this again is not what you think it will be. So let's get into that, shall we? This geologist is known as Dr. Danny Natawijaja and he looked into the possibility of the mountains being possible artificial pyramids. He explored them and researched them using seismic tomography, resistivity survey and other remote sensing techniques, some direct excavations and deep core drilling. But when you look further into this claim and you do the proper research, like I did you discover that Dr. Danny Natawijaja spoke about a possible Indonesian pyramid and not the mountains on the Faroe Islands. The original claims made by people using information from multiple different locations in the world and research from these places and they took what they wanted and they created the illusion of an ancient civilization much older than previously known who are attributed to the creation of two pyramids and the entire claim falls apart when you actually do the research. When you know a mountain's name, you can find out everything there is to know. These two mountains, Hafjall and Halgafeli, just were created by glaciers, melting ice. They were formed during the ice ages and, I mean, I'm not saying the most recent ice age, I mean, 
they're probably a couple million years old. So they're not man-made. They're mountains. Mountains can have a bit of a pyramid shape. This is known. We've seen this at Antarctica. I didn't believe that to be a pyramid either. They're mountains. That's okay. It shows that we need to stop taking things for face value. We need to keep an open mind for sure and not discard everything as mere illusion or theories. But we do need to do our due diligence and do the research. And yes, it can take time and it, it's tedious to research these things and it's annoying. And uh, sometimes it takes a couple hours before you even find information that you were looking for. But stop choosing what to believe and start looking at the actual evidence. You cannot look at research and then take one or two things out of that that you do believe and you discard the entire rest of it. That's not how scientific research works. It's super important that we do remember that when a scientist, uh, archaeologist, paleontologist, anthropologist, Geologists, whenever one of them makes a claim, they have done everything in their power to discredit their own claim. They have done the research to try to show that their claim is not true. That's one of the main things in the field of science, that it's one of the most important things that they do. It's why I do believe archaeologists and paleontologists and anthropologists and geologists because I know that they've tried everything in their power and let, even let their peers do whatever that they had in their power to discredit their claim. So when they make a claim, I know they really tried to show that it isn't true. And in fact, they could only find out that it is true, which is why they make the claim, which is why they write a paper, which is why it's in the news. These pyramids, mountains, are mountains. I see no evidence for them being anything but mountains. The people who tried to pull this off as the most ancient civilization who created the most ancient pyramids on the face of the earth, and they were pre-cataclysmic and they were wiped out, there is no evidence. And the evidence that they do give us falls short. It completely crumbles the moment you take the time to research it. So yes, I've seen this picture that you see on screen right now on my Facebook and I've seen it on Twitter and I've seen it on Instagram and I've even seen it on a multitude of websites. And there is no evidence and still people are sharing it because they believe it just because a picture said it. We need to do better. Really, we do. Take the time to research. Try to get to the bottom of things if you see anything. Yes, it's intriguing. Of course. And it's fun to theorize and I like it. And I love thinking about the fact that there could in fact be a pre-cataclysmic civilization that existed that was wiped out. I do believe that the possibility is there. I've just not personally seen the evidence for it. And that's okay. That's my personal opinion. We don't need to agree on everything, but we do need to take the time to research. It's really important. So before I end the video, I would like to remind you about the special offer that Blinkist is offering you, which is a seven day free trial and a 25% off of a premium membership if you use the link in the description down below and in the pinned comments. And I can tell you right now that it's www.blinkist.com slash Kaylee. And I mean, at least try it out and let me know what you think so we can have a conversation about Blinkist. And if you enjoy watching this video, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos where I theorize with you and Click that bell icon if you want to be notified every single time I upload because I am planning a live stream soon and I'm planning other fun things and I'm uploading a lot, quite a bunch. So yeah, definitely, definitely click that bell icon. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then that's a real, real terrible shame. But click the card in the upper right corner or one of the links in the description down below 
or click the video in the end card. I would also like to thank my highest tiered patrons and members and of course a massive thank you to everyone supporting me but too many names for the end of the video so I only say the highest tiers. Floyd, Barry, Vaughn, Jeff Henderson, DJ, Klaus Jepsen, Ricky, Ira Whiteside, Malius Flavos, Tom Barkwell, Dibbler666, Timothy P. Smith and Gerald Lamontan. With a special, special thank you to CJMVEJBY. And I would also like to thank my channel members of the highest tiers, Phobes Phobes, James Fisher, Debo and Ben Oppenheimer. Thank you all so much for watching and theorizing with me. I had a lot of fun and yeah, I hope to see you in the next video. I mean, I just came back from England. I uh, barely slept these past few days. I walked around about 15,000 to 20,000 steps per day. I'm very tired. My legs burn still. My heels have completely cracked open and I've got multiple blisters. And uh, yeah, everything just hurts inside my body because I went way over my limits. There was a reason I received disability pay until recently. And uh, yeah, my body is just a bit uh, tired and over it, to be completely honest. So um, yeah, I would like to sleep for a month, but that's not an option. So I will work and I will do my best. I will live stream sometimes to hang out with you guys. But yeah, I mean, I've got a lot that I want to create from what I filmed in England. And soon I'll fly out to Sweden for a couple days to see my sister. And uh, yeah, a lot of content coming your way, but bear with me. I'm just a little bit, you know, dead in the brain at the moment. I'm sleepy. So yeah, very sleepy. Blinkist, check it out, please. I mean, honestly, I really enjoyed using it and I feel like many of the people watching me will enjoy it. I know some of you are more into the audio stuff. Thankfully, that's what they offer. So yeah, please check that out and let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed using it. Because yeah, I would like to know. Are there bloopers? Are there bloopers? In the territory of Russia, that goes back way further than what we per currently, currently, currently. I think I have cats on my mind because I said currently instead of currently. Per per, on the Pharaoh, I I I I, 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 I became a pirate there. Sorry, I, 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 I